You know what, Amanda? It's a beautiful day for a red carpet. I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you, Alicia. Would you be mine? <laughs> Could you be mine? <laughs> okay, I think you guys realize where we are. We are at the world premiere of It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, starring the one and only Tom Hanks as the iconic, the legendary children's television host, Fred Rogers. And we'd like to thank Hudson's Bay for giving us these red cardigans uh -huh. to wear. Of course, it takes more than just popping on a red cardigan to play Fred Rogers, and I can't wait to talk to Tom Hanks all about that. And maybe we could get him to put on a red card we'll again. See. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how It'll we go. It'll be a great moment. <laughs> I love these TIFF moments. You're watching TIFF live from the red carpet presented by Hudson's Bay Company. And I'm Alicia Malone. We're at Roy Thompson Hall. I'm from Turner Classic Movies. And I'm with the lovely Amanda Paris from CBC Arts and CBC Music. It is day three of the festival. And we are so excited to meet Tom Hanks, uh, Matthew Reese, Chris Cooper, and the director of this film, Marielle Heller. But before we get into it, let's acknowledge where tonight's events are taking place. That's right. We're on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. And we are so proud and grateful to have the opportunity to support First Nations, Inuit, and Métis communities by showing the works of Indigenous filmmakers here at TIFF, not only at the festival, but year-round at the TIFF Bell Lightbox. Definitely. That actually includes a film that is happening tomorrow. It's called... The the body remembers when the world broke, and it begins when a woman decides to stop in the street uh, when she finds a stranger crying and give her comfort, and it leads to a powerful and transformative conversation between two Indigenous women coming from very different circumstances. It is directed by Ella Maya Tailfeathers and stars Violet Nelson. We really hope that you can join us for seeing this film on the big screen. That sounds wonderful, and right now we are live on TIFF's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channels, so make sure you comment below, let us know what you think of the interview what we, you would ask Tom Hanks if you had the opportunity and what you think of the film tonight. And if you do comment, you have the chance to win two free tickets to the world premiere of Jojo Rapid. It's happening tomorrow. Oh, it's a big wait. movie. It stars Scarlett Johansson, uh, Taika Waititi, who also directed it, Sam Rockwell. So just tell us in the comments what is the other film that Matthew Reese is in this year here at TIFF. Yes, and I can't wait to get into this film. This is one of my most anticipated movies here at TIFF, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. We've got the director right now, Marielle Heller. She's just getting out of the car. And then soon after that, we'll see Tom Hanks, Matthew Reese, Chris Cooper. You may recognize Marielle Heller. She was the director for Can You Ever Forgive Me, which was a huge awards favorite last year and actually one of my favorite movies of the year as well, too. It was such a wonderful film. I love Ms. Melissa McCarthy in that movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it, she should have been nominated, Marielle, for I Best agree. Director at the Oscars. But, but I'm glad that... Melissa scored a nomination, yes. so did Richard E. Grant, yes, who I'm had a phenomenal turn in that as well, too. And I think the screenplay as well. Yeah, yeah, and I cannot wait to see Tom Hanks in this role, because really, is there a perfect actor, more perfect actor, to play I Fred Rogers? I don't think there is. Tom Hanks. I don't think there is. He is completely the perfect ha actor. Marielle Heller uh, has also been an actress as well, too, became a director, and has told us and made sure to let the world know that this is not going to be a straightforward biopic, that we are going to see kind of a new side and a new way of looking at Fred Rogers. Of course, there was the incredible documentary that came out last year yes. about Fred Rogers. Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor, which was beautiful. And she said, that's great. This is going to be a whole new way of like exploring and uh, telling his story. Yeah, it's based on the article written about Fred Rogers by reporter Tom Juno, who's going to be here tonight. And... It really it looks at Matthew Reese, who just got out of the car, actually, <laughs> plays a character called Lloyd Vogel, who is a journalist who's very cynical and very jaded about the world, yeah. until he meets Mr. Rogers. And then Mr. Rogers, played by Tom Hanks, really gets to the, the heart of why he is feeling that way. If you have never read the article, I highly recommend it. I read it recently, and it's a beautiful profile and kind of a poetic sort of realization of the way that one man can change a person's life. And it's so incredible that Fred Rogers didn't just change children's lives, he changed adults lives as well to you. I'm interested to know what lessons or what has stayed with Tom yeah. after 21 years since that article came out. 
Marielle Heller there meeting all the fans on the red carpet. This is a packed, beautiful. she looks very beautiful. It's a packed red carpet. There are so many people here, literally in the rafters, yeah. out here to celebrate at TIFF right now. It's going to get very, very loud, particularly when Tom Hanks comes. And, you know, I think it's impossible to be jaded or cynical around real Tom Hanks, just like it is to be impossibly cynical around Mr. Rogers. I'm just letting you know, I'm going to fangirl a little bit He's because great. I'm very excited. He is exactly here comes as you would imagine him to be. He is just so nice, and right now we're going to talk to Maria. Hi. Hello, she's going to come up here on the podium. Hi. Hello, lovely to meet you. I'm Amanda. Hi, Amanda Mari. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Mari. So nice to meet you. Me too. Now, we were just talking about how this is not a straight biopic, no. but I love the idea of contrasting the cynicism of Lloyd Vogel with the optimism of Fred Rogers. So, can you tell us about that choice? Well, we had a beautiful documentary that came out about Mr. Rogers that really gave us everything you would need to know from a biopic. I feel like our movie is a really good companion piece to the biopic, to the, to the documentary. If you've seen that movie, you know a lot about Mr. Rogers, and this is really... Our movie shows Mr. Rogers' mission in action, what it was like to be friends with him and to take the way that he believed to live and see that actually in action. So I think it's a really nice companion piece with the documentary. We know that this is inspired in part by the article by Tom Juno. Yes. Can you tell us what it was about that article that made you say, this is a perspective that I want to see on screen? If you've read that article, it's one of the most vulnerable, honest articles about his own childhood. And Mr. Rogers was sort of known for being able to take an interview with a journalist and turn it around on them and get them to suddenly start talking about their childhood and their deep pain and suddenly they're crying and they don't know why. And so that happened to Tom Juno. He said he always felt that he knew, he always had more karate moves than whoever he was interviewing until he met Fred Rogers. And that you can see the difference between his writing from before he started, he wrote the article for Fred and after. He said, I was just more cynical and my, I, I learned a kinder way to write after him. That is a skill to yeah. have. Now, I know you tried to shoot this film as authentically as possible. Yes. So what was it like being in the studio where Mr. Rogers shot with Tom Hanks in the red cardigan? We felt a real responsibility to do it justice, and it felt like we needed to do his family and the people who had worked on that show proud. Um, so we took an insane amount of pride in every detail of recreating the set. And really, we just wanted to honor this man who was so wonderful and such a beloved hero to so many of us um, but it felt emotional is the only way I can explain it I mean I think we all cried multiple times mm. in the making of it it was a really a labor of love we all really felt like we were doing something that mattered and it felt like we were we had a big responsibility I can't That's wait to incredible. see it congratulations congratulations and enjoy this tonight. I'm so happy to be here <laughs> well welcome back we're happy, happy. thank you <laughs> thank you enjoy all right, enjoy thank you <laughs> That was Marielle Heller. She's such a, a wonderful director. I'm so glad she's getting more opportunities to tell big stories like this one and do it in the right way. Yeah, it sounds like this was a powerful experience for everybody involved, which gives me goosebumps just to hear about it, to know that they were so emotional doing it. I mean, paying tribute to the life of someone who's so beloved and so uh, celebrated and has meant so much to so many people must feel like a huge honor and a privilege. Yeah, I have to say, I didn't grow up with Mr. Rogers. If he did come to TVs in Australia, I'd certainly missed out, but I wish that I didn't because as soon as I saw the documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor, I thought, what a wonderful man and, and how much he cared and how much he was all about kindness yeah. and not shielding anything from the children. You know, yeah. he believed that they should talk about these tough subjects. Yeah, I mean, he dealt with a lot of really difficult things with young, with kids that so often in our society we're told they are too young to talk about this or they're yeah. too young to exploit. So it's going to be really fascinating to see someone who so many of us have also grown up with, Tom Hanks. America's dad. America's dad <laughs> embody this role. I'm very excited. The red carpet is getting full and you can probably hear people. They are so excited about this movie and so excited about everyone who's coming. And I think we have Tom Juno waiting to come up okay. right now and he of course wrote the article that this film is based on. So we'll get to talk to him about meeting Mr. Rogers. Come on up, Tom. Come on up. Hi, Tom. How you doing? How you doing? So nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. You nice can be right here between us. Between us. Yeah. So I'm curious. It's been 21 years now since you yeah. wrote that article. Right. What has stayed with you about Mr. Rogers? Any lessons he taught you? Well, the uh, I mean, the most amazing thing. One of the most amazing things that ever happened in my life 
was that Mr. Rogers decided to be uh, a friend of mine. And it's, uh, it's really a, a stroke of luck. It's sort of like a, it's sort of like a miracle. And he taught me um, what kindness looks like. Not just, not just that he's like a nice guy, or, uh, but he's sort of a, a radically kind guy. And he taught the world, and he taught me what that looked like. That's great. So. I wish we could talk to you for longer, but you're being whisked away from okay. us. Congratulations right. well, so on much. this. I can't wait to see yes. Okay, well, I, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. That was Tom Juno, who wrote the article that it's based on. And right now we have Matthew Reese. Hi. Hi, Matthew. How you Hi. doing? Yeah, lovely to meet you. Two hands coming at you. Alicia, nice to meet you. too. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about what it was like to step on that set and to be in that space where Mr. Rogers was every day? Was it a little surreal? It was, given... Obviously, you may hear from my accent, I'm not American, so I didn't grow up with Mr. Rogers. <laughs> but but in, the, in the research, you know, leading up to it, obviously I watched uh, an inordinate amount, so to step on and see how they'd recreated it was incredible. And to be filmed, obviously, to be filming in that very place in Pittsburgh, and with a lot of his old staff around, oh, wow. was, uh, it was, it was, it was very moving. And then stepping onto set with, you know, Academy Award winner Chris Cooper and Academy oh double Academy Award winner Tom Hanks <laughs> wasn't frightening at all. I know. Well, that's so that thing. was fine. If I ever feel jaded for my job, all I have to do is talk to Tom Hanks and then I feel alive. It's uh, impossible to be cynical around here. No. And I, 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 I adhere to the statement that he, it was as if they chose, you know, they, they refer to Fred Rogers as America's father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I said they got America's dad to play America's father because everyone has this kind of warm paternal feeling yeah. with regards to Mr. Hanks, myself included. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Can you talk a little bit about the energy on set? I mean, Fred Rogers was known for being such a calming presence. Was that, do you feel like his energy was present on the set as well too? Yeah. Absolutely. I just think the fact that we'd all sort of, you know, deep, deep dived into who he was and the, the, what he stood for and represented, it was, it certainly filtered or infiltrated its way into everyone and it was a very nice set. Oh, right. congratulations. congratulations. And congratulations on the report as thank, well. Thank yeah. you very much. Have thank fun tonight. Much. Thanks very much. Great <laughs> to be here. Thank Take you all. That was Matthew Reese who plays the journalist Lloyd Vogel who starts out being very cynical but then meets Mr. Rogers. And now we have Chris Cooper coming up here who plays Lloyd's father. Hello. In the Belm. Hi Hello. Chris, how are you doing? Hello. Hi Alicia. So Alicia, nice to meet hi, you. Hi. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with Fred Rogers before working on this film? Were you a fan of his? Did you grow up with him? A to be bit? totally honest, as I've said it a thousand times, I completely missed that era. But I checked in, you know, occasionally, and I certainly saw the uh, documentary, and I was knocked out uh, by this man. You know, and, uh, what I most appreciated was his inclusion of children with uh, disability, you know, yeah. and um, be ever, I'll be forever grateful, you know, for that. What do you think it was that people really loved about him, the people that met him in real life? There's just so many words about it, in inclusiveness, sensitiv sensitivity, forgiveness. Um, some kind of some some kind of understanding that is so broad, and he um, just really, you know, I was skeptical. I said, mm. "Nobody like this," yeah. and uh, he really proved me wrong. Yeah. What surprised you most about in your research and in your deep dive of Fred Rogers? What surprised you most in terms of what you learned about him? Well, I mean, going over there and shooting in Pittsburgh, I mean, serious fans, serious yeah. fans, and they just adore him. And, um, you know, um, as a company, as, a, as an ensemble of actors that really made us, you know, buckle down extra hard, you know. It sounds like it was an incredible experience yeah, for everyone yeah. that we're speaking to. Congratulations on this tonight. Thank you. Have yeah, a great enjoy night. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, we can't wait to see the film. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Chris.
That was Chris Cooper. He played Lloyd's father in there, and you can see him even getting emotional talking about Mr. Rogers. I am so excited to see this film. It seems like it has meant so much to so many people that are part of it. I and wish it, I grew up with Mr. Rogers. So do, you know, I felt the same <laughs> way when I saw person. the documentary as well, too. <laughs> yeah. It kind of seems like an almost magical person. It's, it's hard to imagine that he's real, you know? I know, and that's the thing that we want to talk to Tom Hanks about when he arrives, is like, how do you possibly humanize a character that has become almost saint-like? Yeah. You don't want to play him as a, just an unreal, heroic, untouchable guy. In a way, it kind of feels, feels like, like he is. <laughs> <laughs> like, that actually might be the reality. It's I know. really fascinating. Well, luckily they have, yeah, multiple Oscar winner Tom yes. Hanks to do the job. I mean, I'm when sure you think about all the job. different roles that Tom Hanks has done over the years, uh, from Forrest Gump to Big to Castaway, Cast Away, I, there's just so many. I to, love You Got Mail. You, so do I. See, this <laughs> in <Jeremy> Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Seattle. Yeah, yes. you know, just for so many genres and has occupied so many roles, but in all of them there is this sense of this is Tom Hanks. This yes. is this is this guy who's so familiar and you feel so comfortable with him. You've met him before. I've never met him, but I feel like I know him, which might be weird for him. But. Yeah, I've, I've met him. I've asked him to say that we're best friends on camera, so it would be somehow legally binding, but I doubt he will remember me at all. But he's just so kind him. to talk to, so I imagine any set with Tom Hanks on it is a very special set, especially when they're filming in that studio. Yeah. I, for those that are just tuning in, we are here at the world premiere of A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. It is the world premiere of this film, inspired by the life of Mr. Fred Rogers, and takes a lot of its uh, inspiration also from an Esquire article that was written about him in profile. Uh, we hear word that one of the actors has just arrived, Susan Kelechi Watson, so hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to her. Yeah, she plays Lloyd Vogel's wife in the film. I imagine her character goes through a big transformation as he is doing that as well. This is Tiff, live from the Red Red Carpet presented by Hudson's Bay. We are at Roy Thompson Hall, and I've never seen it this packed. It is very full. There's so many people. I mean, it's Lots a beautiful of red day. cardigans down there. Lots of red cardigans. It's a beautiful day, and so many people obviously have such a close connection to Fred Rogers and a close connection to this cast, which includes Tom Hanks, who we are very excited to meet as well. Exactly, and, and you know, as much as Tom Hanks is the perfect person to play Fred Rogers, and I can't imagine anyone else playing him, you know, Tom Hanks is very gregarious. So he right. walks into a room and you know Tom Hanks is there, he's smiling, he's talking to everyone, and he's really open and happy, whereas it sounds like Mr. Rogers had much more of a calm, quiet presence. Yeah. So there must have been some differences, and of course Tom Hanks had to go through makeup and transformation right. in order to look like Mr. Rogers. But you know, when that trailer dropped, like yeah. fans yeah. online just went wild as soon as it did. As you can see, Susan Kelechi Watson has just arrived. You may recognize her from the hit TV show This Is Us as well, too. She's a really exciting actor who's doing lots of really great things right now. She is. I mean, look at her signing all the autographs there and um, talking to the fans. And I love her dress, a beautiful purple dress with a train. It's so nice to see all the fans who have been yeah. here since, you know, early this morning. I remember I walked past here at about 10 a.m. and everyone was lined up. People have been go. camped out for this, but that's what TIFF is, you know. They call it the People's Festival for a reason, for a very good reason, because so many folks get to come out and be a part of the festival. It's not just for those and in the industry. And to be part of the stars. Hi. Hi, Susan. Hi, lovely to meet you. I'm Amanda. Hi, Alicia. It's so nice to meet you. You can sit right over here between us. Love your dress. Yes. It's so beautiful. Hello. Well, congratulations on this. Thank you. We know that you play the wife of Lloyd Vogel, mm -hmm. who was completely transformed by his encounter with Fred Rogers. Can you talk to us a little bit about what impact that has on the relationship between the two of you? Oh, the fortunate thing is it has a really positive impact on the relationship <laughs> because we're going through some things. Mm -hmm. But then when, uh, you know, Mr. Rogers, uh, by Tom, played by, amazingly by Tom Hanks, wait till you see this, wait till you see Matthew and Chris Cooper. Um, when he comes into our lives, he begins to shift our perspectives on how to handle the stresses and the challenges of life. And when life is not what it was before, when things change and you have to adapt. I love in the trailer how your character says, don't ruin my childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you a fan of Mr. Rogers and did you huge, feel that way about the film? Huge. I was a huge. Oh, wow. My younger brother and I, like, were glued to Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mr. Rogers, Sesame Street. That was like our, that was our groove, like, when we were growing up. And so there are, like, episodes that I remember. I remember, like, you know, everything was in repeat back then. I didn't realize that. I right. thought it was all happening in real time. You know, you're young, you don't know. But, um... 
just looking forward to the episodes like every day and and all of that and and what he taught us those lessons kind of like stay with you and how patient he was mm -hmm. as a, a teacher as someone who spoke to young people and and took it seriously and treated you like you had sense in your head yeah, you yeah. know what i mean and and really spoke to you with a kind of respect and you don't forget something like that yeah well now you've been able to revisit him as an adult if you could take one lesson that mr rogers has taught that you think everyone in the world should know what would that lesson be wow um he used to say something like you're good enough just the way you are like by just your being you was like his thing and i and i believe in that strongly i think that by just your being you by just your being present in the world that's your mm. validation mm. and that um if you would just sort of understand that and, and be allow yourself to be that's probably one of the most powerful things you know authenticity is so powerful and one person who's very authentic is tom hanks <laughs> what was it like to be on set with him and his so magic tom hanks, yeah um <sighs> What do you say? What do you say? And the man is just such an incredibly humble and kind man. And to have that kind of talent and that kind of, you know, he's he's like, I don't know, he's like the Godfather. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's that man. So yeah. he is. Well, yeah. And beyond that, he's sort of like our our like legend, our superstar. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, you, there's not a you can't run a list of movies without his name being in there amongst the best of all time. So it was such an honor for me to get to play alongside him and and watch him. And I'm always trying to learn. So yeah. who better? It's wonderful to see you growing and see you doing all the things. I'm just proud of you. I don't know you, but I'm proud oh, of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I feel the love. Uh, I, I'm so proud. Congratulations on this. Enjoy tonight. Thank you. I'm gonna have a great time. Congratulations. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Stunning. She looks wonderful, doesn't she? Alrighty. So right now we have Enrico Colantoni coming up, who is the former president and CEO of the Fred Rogers Company, who plays the former president and CEO of the Fred Rogers Company. Hi. Hello. How you doing, Welcome. Alicia? So nice, nice to meet you. Nice. Come nice in between us. Right there. Yes, come on in. Right. So congratulations on this. Congratulations on oh, this. Thank you. It's very exciting to be yeah. a part of it. I can't even believe I'm here. And I'm from Toronto, too. So oh, I yeah. just come in. Hey, just sit in the car and just go to Tiff. What's up? That's awesome. Your usual, what yeah, day no, is it? Like, Saturday and Saturday, Saturday night? Saturday usual night in Saturday September. Night. Right? Yeah. I would have been here anyway, right? Oh, yeah, it's just how you talk. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you play the former president and CEO of the Fred Rogers Company, yes, Bill, Bill Eisler. Eisler. Bill so Eisler. can you tell us a little bit about your character and the role that he plays in the story? Well, the truth is, is that Bill Eisler was much more important to Fred Rogers than my character is in this film. He is pivotal in everything that Fred Rogers did. He was his right-hand man, he was his producer, and he very much stood in the background and watched Fred. He called, he referred to Fred as the, the, the franchise. Well, you're the franchise, Fred. <laughs> and uh, it, it, meeting him and meeting his wife, Marty, was just probably the best thing about, about this film and knowing that that it was all real and it was all and Fred Rogers was a real human being and everything was confirmed not only so this film is really much going to be a reintroduction of the goodness and the, the trademark that was Fred Rogers and uh, not to say that we need to miss Fred Rogers but I think he's he's inside of us all and yeah but I think it's a good time to remind us that uh, that his message is still alive and well and, um, but but Bill Eisler was you know he's still He's still working with um, with uh, uh, Daniel the Tiger, and he's still at the really? forefront. Still at the forefront of um, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, young education and early education, and so he's a remarkable man. I was very, very fortunate to meet him and yes. hang out with him and spend their anniversary together. Whatever, it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, your life is yeah. just normal. Yeah, like, no, it's completely. And normal. also, you're like in a this. film with Tom Hanks, which is totally normal. Which was, uh, you know, I love telling everybody how awful he was to work with <laughs> which you should see people's faces are just like what, what? no i'm kidding he's All everything an act. Yeah. he's everything you think he is and uh, so yeah no that was that was that was wonderful too what was it like seeing him in the red card again um well every i mean we had the good fortune of filming in pittsburgh on the original stage mm -hmm. a lot of the old characters came by the visit it there were moments of sheer magic where you thought we were reliving something that happened all those years ago. 
and he just walked right into it. He's st he's still he 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 possesses the integrity of a young actor still after everything he's done. Mm. He's still so respectful to Mari, the director, and just like he just wanted to be that guy. So uh, you know. Any young actor who's got a, an attitude on their shoulder <laughs> should work with Tom Hanks exactly. just to remember that yeah. <laughs> the best of the best is still humble and right. still gracious for what he does. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Congratulations on this. Thank Have you. a great night. We can't wait to see the thank film. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Me, me, me too. <laughs> Good luck. Get in there. Right. Have you Saturday bye -bye. night. Take care. <laughs> so that was Enrico Colantoni, who is playing Bill Eisler in the film. Sound, I actually didn't know about Bill Eisler. It sounds like he had a humongous role in the, the, the phenomenon that is Mr. Fred Rogers. I love that he's still with Daniel the Tiger as well. I remember learning about Daniel in that documentary, yeah. and it was so sweet. And, you know, Fred Rogers definitely, like Enrico said, had so many great messages that I think the world needs right now mm -hmm. because there is a lot of cynicism, yeah. a lot of uh, people jaded and, and feeling despondent, and a lot of kids that I think could yeah. use some of the messages and of kindness. Some adults. <laughs> yes, yeah, being definitely. yourself. I mean, that's the hardest thing ever to be yourself and be happy with it. Well, I, I don't usually scroll down to YouTube comments, but I did scroll down when the trailer for this was film nice? hit, and people sounded so relieved to know that this film was even in existence that we can return to the space of Mr. Fred Rogers and return to this place of goodness and kindness and empathy and patience that he, you know, put out into the world. And so, I don't know, maybe this film will have a bit of an impact. It felt like the documentary did as well. It too. really did, yeah. and I think that documentary came at a right time as well, and this film will too. It's coming out in theaters in th at Thanksgiving in America, so that's the perfect time to really uh, think about, you know, what you're grateful for in your life and, and to be kind to everyone. I also have to say, just a side note, I'm really happy that the Canadian spelling of neighbor is the same as the Australian spelling with the U. With the U. Because definitely. it looks naked without the U. But in America, beautiful day in the neighbor. They just forgot. They, they forgot, forgot something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you've just tuned in, this is Chip live from the red carpet, presented by Hudson's Bay. We are here at Roy Thompson Hall. The crowd is very excited because we're waiting Mr. Tom Hanks. He's the last one to come. He's the last. Of course he's the last well, one. Of yeah. course. You see, it is the world premiere of... Um, Beautiful gosh, day. Say, Won't you be my neighbor? Yeah. That was the documentary. <laughs> a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Both movies are movies that people have been very excited about. Both movies are inspired by the life of Fred Rogers, the beloved children's television host, mm -hmm. and he is played by the beloved actor Tom Hanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, Mario Heller, the director, was talking about that documentary. It had such of an impact. Won't you be my neighbor? Mm -hmm. But it really told the story of Fred Rogers' life. So they didn't want to just repeat that and do a straight biopic. Instead, the idea was to take this great article written by Tom Juno, who yeah. we spoke to earlier. Uh, he wrote this article 21 years ago, and he said it changed his life. He's still thinking about it today. You know, I recently read the article, and it's a really beautiful, not a straightforward profile at all. It's one where he's clearly reflecting on himself. It's almost a little bit like poetry, the way that it's structured as well, too. His observations of the impact that Mr. Rogers had on so many folks, children and adults alike, his own dis uh, descent into his own memories and childhood memories and realizing where certain things have come from. Mm. If you haven't checked it out, you should definitely do so, especially because it helps to inspire this film and this very unique perspective on the impact of Fred Rogers on this world. Absolutely. I love how it changed Tom Gino's writing forever after that. That's what we just learned, yeah. And Matthew Reese is playing a journalist called Lloyd Vogel here, who is, I think, somewhat similar to Tom Gino, but of course it's only based on those events. Mm. And Chris Cooper is playing Lloyd's father. Lloyd is very cynical you know, he's jaded with life until he meets Mr. Rogers, played by Tom Hanks, and then he discovers a new lease on life and also where a lot of that pain comes from, which I think is the relationship with his father. So expect some great scenes between um, Matthew Reese and Chris Cooper. Yes, definitely. Film. And also with Susan Kelechi Watson, who plays his uh, wife. There's a great. car driving up, and apparently Tom Hanks is in it, oh, so I'm getting nervous. But. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's see if he gets out. Just so delightful. I'm getting nervous too. I've spoken to him before. 
but he's just so lovely. Wow. This crowd is so excited right now. You can hear them. You can feel the. You felt the energy just change as soon as he stepped out of that car. Now they're all trying to get his attention, yes, so he comes over always. and takes photos. Look at how many cameras <laughs> oh, are pointing at ridiculous. him right now. He's I see more some cameras than photos. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And a shoe over there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone has a beach ball, the volleyball. Oh, Wilson. <laughs> Oh, Tom Hanks is posing by car, <laughs> and he is posing for those cameras. He knows how to work a camera, this yeah. guy. Oh, he is so kind. Oh, Hi. Oh, Hi. 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 Oh, Hi. Hi. Oh, Hi. 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 I feel like you're, you're like my screensaver at home. Hi, Hi Tom. Amanda, nice to meet nice you. To meet it's you. a pleasure. Nice to meet How's you. it going? Come right here. Nice to meet you. Okay. Yes, All right. Hi. So I'm intrigued about how you possibly humanize a character that has become almost saint-like in people's minds. Oh, that's, uh, you know, you, I think that's the biggest thing you had to fight against is that, number one, he has a very specific demeanor. Has a very specific effect on everybody, no matter what age there are. Delight at the age of two and a half to say maybe, maybe five and a half to six, and some other kind of like incandescent uh, reaction that adults get from it because uh, part of his carriage and I think the effectiveness of what you'd have to probably say was his ministry that he took took very, 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 very seriously. But if you met anybody who worked with him, and we did, we, we met an awful lot of people who knew Fred day in and day out, said that he was, uh, they heard a couple of the dirty jokes that he would say it <laughs> at, really? well, at Christmas time, it was usually making a reference to the shiny, the, the shiny balls on a, on, a, on, a, on a Christmas tree. But he was a, what he was, I think, that was unique about him is that he took his, the choice he made in order to make a very, very specific type of, of creation for a very specific group of human beings, and that was little children who don't know how the world works. And I think all of us could use an explanation every now and again of why things are the way they are. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in Tom Juno's article, he talks about the fact that uh, Fred Rogers was also in a battle almost with the medium of television and how he was a warrior for creating a space of grace on the small screen. What do you think about that battle? Where is he? Did he win that battle? Are we on a losing side well, of that I think battle? he only won it by choice because he, he recognized that television was a medium of commerce. Uh, and I think that, it, according to all, both what I had talked to, when he saw the way children were treating, uh, see the way television was treating children as as consumers, as a as a as a blanket, what do they call it, a quadrant of of uh, consumers, advertising targets, who they really wanted them just to get to spend their money in a certain way. He realized that there is an age where that's fine and dandy and proper because everybody knows what the rules of television are, but not at the age of three and not at the age of five. You, it let them decide for themselves when they want to start looking askance at what is being pitched to them. But for this very uh, is is, vir is virginal audience? I don't, I don't mean that in the way that I would be talking about. Yeah. But that young, that young audience Innocent. that is not just impressionable, but has yet to be impressed upon. Mm -hmm. That's that's who he wanted to treat as something other than a target audience, which is contrary to the rules of television. Well, talking with Tom Juno, he still feels like he's changed from meeting him 21 years ago. So do you feel changed or any different from playing him? I have to say that uh, I sort of do. Uh, part of it is because of the way I had to just slow down and ponder things um, that he took that he took as, uh, as, as his responsibility. For example, I now get up very early in the morning when I'm able to, not as regularly as Mr. <laughs> Rogers did, and simply answer mail. Mm. Not every letter that is written to me, but there every now and again I have a crack staff that goes through and says, this is a special letter from somebody who is special. And I now realize that that's not that hard a choice to make. It mm. takes a little bit of time. But what the real effort is, is to be authentic in your response to what those are, what those letters are. And I've seen the letters. I've seen the emails and correspondence that even Tom had with Mr. Rogers long after the fact of the, uh, of the article coming out. And he remained an honest and concerned 
friend who understood the pressures that a guy like Tom was under and supported him as, not as a former uh, subject of his work, but as, as a friend would. And that's, that's something we can all choose to do if we want to and also if we have room for it in our lives. There's so much skepticism and cynicism in the world. Why do you think, what, do you, what role do you hope that he has and his story has on audiences well, today? I think that it's, it is about the value and the import of authenticity. I think that so much, I mean, look, I'm now on a promotional junket for a film I've made for the Sony <laughs> Corporation. So everybody knows that there's some aspect of that that is the contract that, that we have with the right. entertainment business. But inside that, that is a reflection of, uh, of who we are. It is also can be a reflection of how we decide to interact with the world at large, not just the one that is that we work in. And I think that there is, uh, he's not the first person to do it, I think many others, but he, it, because, because he, because he did it at this age uh, for, for, a, for a very specific, audience. this is one of the things that I recognize when I went back and watched like the hour or so of uh, many, many hours of Mr. Rogers mm -hmm. at Ada, was it? This was not for us. His show was not for us because we can't buy that brand of authenticity. We believe that there's there's a, a hidden hook to it that there's a that he has an agenda somehow mm -hmm. because everybody else that we come across who is in some sort of public medium does have an agenda of self promotion yeah. of uh, of uh, attainment of power or something like that, and he simply did not have that. Mm -hmm. And that brand of authenticity, I think, because I mean. Uh, any media at all, but certainly with the propensity of social media, there's an awful lot of positions you can take and remain anonymous, which is a very easy thing to do if you want to remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot harder, I think, to say, here's who I am, here's what I stand for, here's what I respect in anybody else's uh, position that disagrees with me, but I'm not going to be shaken away from these things that are truly important. And uh, isn't it odd that in a lot of cases that's, the, uh, that's not the norm? Yeah. And it should be a little bit easier for it to be. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we better let you get to your fans. Thank you so much for uh, talking to thank us. Thank you very much. Great. Great. I hope you enjoy. Year. I hope you enjoy the multi-million dollar production <laughs> and the uh, and the agenda that we have in order to support our movie. Such a what the great message. I'll, yeah, I'll take that. We'll take that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am so starstruck right now. I know, isn't he great? So lovely. He's so, so great. Lovely. And uh, he's just always so nice to talk to. One of those people that, yeah, you always get nervous before you talk to him, but then do you find you're like, oh, I know you. Like, so much familiarity. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, was talking to us as though he knew us. Well, he knows yeah. you, but he doesn't know me. <laughs> and I felt like he was talking to me as though he's known me for years. So familiar, so comfortable, so lovely. Um, and a lot of the things that he said are so interesting. You yeah. know, it really does sound like he was able to find out so many different gems about Fred Rogers to bring a sort of nuance and humanity to the character. Um, and also, you know, some realness about what this story and what this person could mean in today's world. Yeah, and also being very authentic that this is a movie. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. it does have a great message, a message of kindness, a message of, you know, being quiet and still, and, and that's the thing, you know, Tom Hanks is known as America's dad, and Mr. Rogers was known as America's father, but Mr. Rogers is also very different. Yeah, this has been a great red it's carpet. It's been a great red carpet. There are so many people here, but do not go anywhere. Stay tuned, because in a little while, we're going to be right back yes. with the world premiere of Hustlers. That's going to be another crazy it's gonna one. It's going to be another crazy one, starring Jennifer Lopez, uh, Constance, Constance Wu, Wu uh, Lily Reinhardt, uh, Kiki Palmer, uh, Cardi B, and Lizzo. It is a ridiculous star study cast. <laughs> So definitely join us here again. Absolutely. This has been Tear for Life on the Red Carpet, presented by Hudson's Bay at Roy Thompson Hall. We hope you have a beautiful day in this neighborhood. <laughs> definitely. Did that work? It totally right. works. Bye. Bye. <laughs>